remote sensing and agriculture water management. Today, webinar will be followed up by webinar webinars on various topics related to modernization of irrigation systems. The theme for our next Congress uh, scheduled for October this year in Mexico. Once again, I welcome you all and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy this session. We will be happy to receive your feedback to improve this new webinar series. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the topic of today's webinar, as you all know, is water accounting and audit. And we have with us Professor Wim Sap Bastiansen from the Netherlands, a senior remote sensing expert with a specialization in agriculture water management. Professor Wim holds the UNESCO Chair for Global Water Accounting and is a senior fellow to the Robert Daugherty Water for Food Institute of the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. He is a professor at the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Geosciences at the Delft University of Technology in the topic Water Resources Management and Remote Sensing. However, before I invite Professor Wim, I would like to introduce uh, another panelist, uh, Ms. Yasmin Siddiqui, uh, Principal Water Resources Specialist, Asian Development Bank, who has been encouraging introduction of water accounting and audit in ADB's activities in the countries. So may I request Ms. Siddiqui to introduce the topic briefly and then uh, invite Professor Wim to deliver the webinar. Ms. Yasmin, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Tiagi, and thank you to colleagues who are on this webinar today. So firstly, we'd like to congratulate ICID on this webinar series. It's a great way to provide information to a much broader audience. And we at ADB are very pleased to join in on the water accounting uh, work using remote sensing. Um, as you've already mentioned, we're working very closely with WIM's team and ADB and uh, UNESCO IHE, which is where WIM is based, have been working in a number of countries to actually start looking at how we can operationalize or at least apply this technology in a real life context in our projects. So currently we have water accounting activities with UNESCO IHE ongoing in Cambodia in all five river basins of Cambodia and also in Vietnam. So we have water accounting studies completed for two out of 14 river basins in Vietnam. And the idea is to broaden this activity also to other countries in our region. And there's already interest from Sri Lanka, from India, and from Indonesia. So we look forward to the expansion of the water accounting work. And similarly for water productivity, uh, WIM's team has been receiving a lot of interest from ADB and the countries we're working in to start expanding this activity as well. And again, we have ongoing work in six countries in Asia, including Vietnam, Indonesia, in Pakistan, and two states of India. And we're soon looking forward to starting in Sri Lanka and possibly in Central Asia as well. So a lot of work has been done in the field to start collecting data and information. And the main challenge we have now is how do we take that information and start applying it into our projects to take us forward in improving water use productivity. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. So, Dr. Wims, Bastien, uh, this is now your turn. Uh, yes. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tiagi. It's a real pleasure to have these uh, discussions um, um, here on on water accounting. Um, I'm just um, can you can you see my slides? How how uh, or I just want to be sure that I can see the slides. Um, Not yet. So can you see them now? Uh, not yet. I don't think we have your slides. Okay. Uh, then let's. Um. 
Sorry, people, we just are working on getting the slides on the screen. I'm not sure it's from my side. I have to do something or... No, no, you try, Dr. Wim. Yes, I think now it's coming. I know you try. So, yes. yes, it's there. All right, very good. Okay, good. Then we take it from here. So, um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, then again, um, I would like to uh, thank ICID for uh, giving me the opportunity to say more about uh, water accounting. And today I will speak uh, very much on water accounting in the context of irrigation systems. Um, I'm trying to move to the next slide. Do you get the next slide? Yes, Dr. Wim, the slide show. Okay. Okay, okay, good. Um, so, um, yeah, we have many challenges in water management, and for many water professionals, um, among you, you are aware of these changes. So, um, I like to focus directly more on irrigation and drainage. And we have this situation with many more people. We have this climate change where temperatures are rising, so there is more uh, water needed to grow our crops. We have this increasing scarcity, uh, but also the water use priorities are changing. And there is also an amount of water that should be released to other competing water sectors um, and and one of them is also environment uh, which takes a lot of water and economic situation is changing our our standards of living uh, but also attitudes to to governments uh, more and more women have an important uh, role in agriculture and in agriculture production uh, and also we get a completely new situation in terms of connectivity and, and new technologies. So there are really um, some 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 new uh, frontiers that that yeah prompt us to to think more critically about irrigation. So um, if you look at the uh, evolution of irrigation, then we we started a long time ago with very simple flood irrigation. Um, we were looking at um, the amount of uh, water that we were uh, putting on, on fields and we were constructing canals and actually it was let's say 20-30 years ago that we moved more towards supply oriented management where we had more accurate calculations of uh, water requirements uh, and we had a better control of water levels. But these days, we really have to move more to modern demand of water management, which means that we have to get agreements, agreements between the water supplier agency and the farmer, so that the farmer is aware how much water is coming, when it's coming, and so on. Um, we have this huge issue of water shortage, so we should look much better on how we can use the water very efficiently, but also very productively. So, uh, one first step to, to 
get a better understanding of the irrigation system is the water balance. And not only we should look at the water balance of an, of an irrigated field, but in fact also of the entire scheme, the, to the total irrigation scheme and simultaneously the amount of water in a river basin. Uh, that is why the water accounting is basically focusing on river basins, so we compute total, uh, total water flows to reservoirs and to lakes and so on and to irrigation systems. Um, this is not really new. We have been uh, advocating for many years in our textbooks that we should quantify hydrological processes in irrigation systems. But um, what is new is the way we calculate these kind of uh, information. So often what I see uh, when, when I work with ADB and other institutional uh, institutes, financial institutes, that there is, there is a more need for information. Uh, and if you ask a person how much water is available uh, for irrigation, um, you, you get often conflicting uh, answers. Uh, so um, we believe that an independent accounting system is very important for uh, understanding. Dr. Wim, yes, Dr. Please. Wim, can we stop you, please? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Verma, it appears that a lot of people are not able to hear. Uh, is there something on your side that needs to be done? Yeah, because uh, I don't think because uh, we are able to hear uh, him. Uh, I'll try to find out from uh, Madhu because from no. our side uh, we are able to hear him. Yeah, we are able to hear him, but we, we get a number of feedback that we are not able to hear. They are able to see. I have more than uh, 15, 20 people. Yes, can't hear. Sorry. Uh, is there something uh, which needs to be done there? From our side, I don't think that. Uh, let Let me find out. Let, let me check. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bim, you can continue, please. Sorry. All right. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, so the point I want to make is that we really need to have an independent uh, information system uh, so, so that we can better judge on how much water we have and how much we can consume. See, the very moment that our water consumption will be more than water in rivers and aquifers, we will know that we are working on mining of water and we are over-exploiting. So it is very important that we understand how much water is in the system. And the system that we develop is called Water Accounting Plus. It is a continuation of earlier water accounting work uh, done by the International Water Management Institute. They have been uh, developing a kind of a first version of water accounting and with the plus we have now elaborated this much further. And the way we report is by means of eight different sheets. So we provide training to many of the countries that Madame Yasmin was referring to in Asia on how to interpret those sheets. We have eight sheets and with a little Okay, there is, we are up, okay. So let me continue. Um, so we, um, we make eight sheets and the idea is that they all cover different themes, okay? So some themes are related to the entire water picture at the river basin and other themes are related to how much water is consumed and how much water is used in agriculture, how much water is in, in the groundwater uh, and so on. We also look at things like ecosystem services because the consumption of water by evapotranspiration can be huge, but also we will get a lot of surfaces like cooling of the climate, uh, we, sequester, we sequester carbon that is otherwise in atmosphere and so on. So there are many different types of services and benefits that we have from water, also from water being used in an irrigation system. So it's a bit like financial accounting. The financial accounting has really um, given us a lot of additional insights in how system works huh? and um, uh, instead of uh, making uh, accounts uh, in monetary we will now make um, uh, the accounts on the base of water volumes. So 
what we provide information on are things like how much water is consumed and non-consumed, and is this water used beneficially or non-beneficially? Um, can we still utilize more water in the future? Um, we also distinguish between green water and, uh, and, and blue water, and so um, that is quite important because also water from rainfall uh, can be used for rain fed cropping, but all the water that is used by uh, rain fed cropping upstream will not be available uh, for water allocation in the downstream part of river basin. So we really look at an, 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 a lot of different themes uh, to, to cover these aspects. Now, one of the big uh, challenges is how to get the data. Uh, and it is my experience that a lot of data, and especially when it comes to strategic data, that this data is locked. Uh, it's not easy to get this data. Uh, and often, um, if you want to make a strategic decision on a big investment or in making a national water resources plan or in, in, in implementing um, agriculture, cultural policy making, you need to have data. And all the stakeholders involved in that decision process need the same data. And so data sharing is very important, but also that the data is open access. And if you go to many countries, it's difficult to get data. And therefore, we have developed a system that is based very much on remote sensing. So. This Water Counting Plus is to a large extent based on remote sensing data, which is a guarantee we have access to the data. So um, the data is measured by about 70, 70 different satellites, and, and this information can be used to calculate things of the water balance. I will give you many examples afterwards. Um, not everything can be measured by satellites, so we need, in addition, also data from GIS databases and from hydrological models. So on the background, we, we run global hydrology models uh, so that also we can have idea about certain water flows that we can otherwise not measure. And of course, ground measurements. Ground measurements are important. Uh, we have to verify things on the ground uh, to the maximum possible extent. At the same time, we should also realize that we cannot measure everywhere how much water is flowing, how much water is in the soil, uh, and so on. And so it's the combination of different sources of information that gives us the opportunity to make the accounts. So this is an example on the next slide on the typical open access data that we have selected. We have selected them very carefully, so we have been checking all the open access data sets that are provided by space agencies, but also by um, very dedicated uh, research institutes like, like IMI and other CGR institutes, uh, and also uh, by national agricultural research institutes that, that make uh, sometimes national data and also sometimes global standard data sets. So, on the left column, you can see the remote sensing data that is directly downloadable. Basically, you do not need any password. And then on the second column to the left, you can see all kind of extra information that we can determine from this first column. Now, the way we do that is that we make scripts, we make small models, and all these models are publicly available. Uh, so these days, we have an, uh, a software a data uh, base called GitHub, and basically all the tools that we make um, in the water accounting team are on GitHub. Um, that means also that local governments, local ministries, local universities can play with the tools and can also start improving them. And so here you can see a lot of uh, input data. So when it comes to irrigation systems, um, yeah, we have been thinking for a very long time and also hoping that we were able to measure flows in all the canals. And we know that in certain places this has worked well, but also in many other places it did not work very well because it was too costly to maintain or the rating curves are outdated or um, structures were uh, manipulated and so on. So to get really a good handle on the flow of irrigation water in a system is, is not so straightforward and is still a kind of a challenge. So really one of the big questions is 
how much water is in my system and where is it going to? Is it really reaching the intended fields or not? Uh, and again, we can have flow measurements at main inlets and main canals, but it's not easy to have flow estimates at every farm gate. So on the next slide, you can see now an example of a measurement of soil moisture. And so this is a um, soil moisture a picture calculated from Landsat data. This is from the Beka Valley in, uh, in Lebanon. Um, usually, a remote sensing gives us estimate of topsoil moisture, but this one is dealing with um, root zone moisture. So we have been developing these tools um, that compute the amount of water in the root zone. Well, you can clearly see that the ones in blue and that they are at field capacity and sometimes even more than that. Uh, so we know for sure that these fields receive water. Uh, so you can very well see which fields get a good supply of water and which ones are not. Uh, and this is independent information that you know tells you a lot on whether the system is working. In this particular case of Beka, there is a lot of groundwater pumping. That's why you see these isolated uh, pictures. The other uh, example that I, I, I want to show you today is the one from South Africa, uh, where in the Inkomati Basin, we have not only looked at moisture, but also calculated how much water was um, uh, uh, subtracted from the river. This is the, the, the Elephant River, uh, Ele Elephant's River, and basically we can see here farmers extracting between 500 up to 1,000 millimeter per year, huh, or 10,000 cubic uh, meter per hectare per year. Um, this is very interesting uh, because you can also start to compare this amount of water abstractions with their uh, water rights. Uh, so whether this uh, a volume of water is authorized or not. Very important for getting a better uh, planning on scarce water and whether the water uh, resources and irrigation systems are, um, are, are, are used in, in a wise way. The frequency distribution show you um, how much water is taken by sugarcane farmers in red and the one in blue you can see the water consumption by all kind of other crops and so you can also learn from this graph that sugarcane is uh, among the crops with the higher water withdrawals. So we have to really um, yeah, scrutinize the water balance we, in terms of FAO. We have to understand where the water goes, how much water we have. And a, a few important terms um, that always come back is what is the withdrawal, how much is consumed, is it used beneficially or non-beneficially, uh, and also what happened with the water that is not consumed. Does it go back and is it recoverable uh, or is it not? And this largely follows the ICID paper of uh, Chris Perry um, that was published in 19... Uh, uh, no, sorry, later, in, in 2006, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, which actually um, was supported by ICID to have a good terminology. Terminology is a very important component of accounting. On this more popular slide, you can see what we mean with this. Huh? So we have a withdrawal, uh, and that goes through a main canal into a big irrigation system. Locally, we do not know exactly how the water is distributed, but we can measure the consumptive use. Uh, so we can see what happens with the water that basically leaves the system. And the water that's not leaving the system goes back to return flow and can be reused. This picture also shows you the essential difference between efficiency and productivity. Uh, so with the water productivity, we are referring to how much food can we produce from a cubic meter of water, uh, whereas in efficiency, we relate much more on how do we get the water to the right place. Now, what is so nice about this consumptive use is that we can measure it through the evapotranspiration, or ET. This is a picture of Imperial Valley. Um, Imperial Valley was chosen because this system is uh, having only one canal, one main canal, for which the uh, discharge is very well known. So we know how much water is entering the system, and also the, the drainage flow into the Salton Sea 
uh, is measured. So we can make a kind of a water balance from the traditional field measurements. And um, that was plotted against the evapotranspiration estimates from satellites. And you can see in the graph below had that really these differences are only in a few percent, which basically means that we can very accurately on every 30 by 30 meter measure how much water is consumed. Now that's the left hand side of this picture. On the right hand side of this picture, uh, we can see that the uh, amount of biomass that is produced uh, from this water. And so we can see the production in, in, in tons um, per hectare, which is also one of the outputs from satellite remote sensing. And together with ADP, we apply this principle to the rice systems in Vietnam. So we calculated how much biomass was produced and in fact, after some harvest index corrections, how much paddy yield it was obtained. Uh, so we can see here uh, at the village level, at community scale, um, a right bank canal and a left bank canal, and we can see uh, tremendous differences in production. Uh, the average production is in the order of, say, five ton per year, uh, but also we can see farmers that go even seven or eight ton per hectare per year. And uh, so this kind of very precise information is very difficult to get otherwise. On the right hand side, we can see how much water it would have taken to, to produce this rice. And so we can see water productivity variabilities, uh, let's say between 0 0.4 kilogram for a cubic meter, but also we can even have two kilogram uh, for a cubic meter. So you can see a factor five or six difference, even at community scale. This is very important for accounting. We have to understand local variabilities and, of course, the reasons why this is happening. That will be the next step, which is more related to the water auditing. Water accounting is more the technical component. So um, we, um, um, we, we, we solve the water flows and the water fluxes um, at the one hand, but also we have to look at the institutional size or you know, the social size, the functioning of water user associations and so on. Why one part of the graph is blue and another part is yellow? Is it because of the water user association? Is it because of the gatekeeper? Uh, this information is very important to discuss with the local irrigation uh, districts. So um, the way we calculate is by uh, applying a water balance. That is not new, but what is new is that we do this at a pixel to pixel scale. So for every pixel, and that can be 30 meter or 100 meter or 250 meter, we calculate the water balance. Classically, um, we, 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 we calculate moisture and from the moisture we calculate ET and, and other fluxes. But what we do in this case, we have the rainfall P from satellites, the ET from satellites, and uh, the soil moisture and soil moisture change from satellites. And what you can see in the bottom of this slide uh, is that that enables you to calculate a kind of total runoff, uh, which is the, the, the the surface runoff and the percolation and the drainage altogether. Now, by making these kind of calculations on a pixel-to-pixel -pixel basis, we can have much more precise information. And that is, for instance, uh, clear in the next slide. So these are the inputs. Uh, so we, we get all this data from open access satellites, and then we can make um, maps on, for instance, runoff and drainage. Uh, this is the situation for the Jordan River. Uh, for, uh, for instance, January 2008. And I can share with you that many of these data um, are archived uh, and many data are uh, going back 10 to 15 years. So you can even make it, um, you can reconstruct a time series to find out this, the differences uh, in, in the water accounts uh, and uh, also to see where things go right and where things goes wrong. Now, for instance, the surface runoff in this case is, is dominant. Huh? Um, it goes up to 300 millimeter uh, per month, but the surface runoff uh, is much more important than, than the base flow, uh, as, as you can imagine in this kind of systems. Now, that information is an input, 
into the calculation of the flows in the streams. This is a picture from Kenya. I just made a collection of different countries to show that the methodology that I'm, I'm explaining is very generic. It has a very generic character and we can also apply it into many other countries. So here in Kenya, what we do is we use a digital elevation model and then we calculate, we, let's say route, we route together all the uh, runoff. And so if we know the runoff from certain pixels, then we can say um, what the distance is to the nearest stream and we can calculate how much water is accumulated in that stream. So even without any uh, flow measurement, we can still make very reliable estimates on the local uh, flow in ungauged streams, even on the smaller ones. Now, why is that important? Because that tells you how much water you have available. Yeah? And you can look also in dry years, uh, what kind of flow you still uh, are harvesting in dry years. And on the base of that, you can make a plan, like how much water can I allocate to irrigation? Uh, what is a safe amount that is always available? Or what about if I plan this dam, how much water will I harvest and so on? Uh, so that is really the core idea of water accounting, that we, we not only look at the soil water balance, but also water in the streams, so that we can do a much better uh, planning process. So to further enhance our data, we also look at water levels. This is important for reservoirs and also for lakes. Uh, and you know that many countries' data on water levels in reservoirs is secret. So it makes it very difficult to estimate how much water is available. But in transboundary rivers conditions, this is an, a very difficult situation because a country downstream would like to know about the water levels upstream in the, in the neighboring country. And the satellites can also measure water levels. So here I show you a picture of altimeters and these altimeters, they basically measure the, the, the level of the, of the water, which here in the next slide is an example from Ethiopia. And so um, we can see uh, with a an, an root mean square error, uh, typically let's say of 10 or 15 centimeter, the, what the water level fluctuation is. Now for many applications, uh, that is, that is uh, more, than, uh, more than sufficient. Uh, so uh, this information can be used to calculate the changes in volumes. Now, this is important because, for instance, the fact sheet number four, the water accounting fact sheet number four, is describing how much water is already utilized, which means it describes how much water is taken from groundwater and from surface water, to which sector is it going, and so on. So we need the information on, on how much water is, is, is taken by the various people and by the different land use classes. And that is why we use the water accounting on the basis of differences in land use. So for every land use class, we do this kind of water budgets. Let me take you also very quickly to an example on groundwater in the Middle East. Many areas uh, with irrigation in the Middle East use groundwater, but we know also that this is in an, uh, in a non is, is, is harvested in a non-sustainable way. So we we have to work on getting a better handle, and Jordan is typically one of these countries. So on this slide, you can see an area in Jordan where we have done an, an, a study um, quickly to estimate how much groundwater is pumped. People don't like to share uh, their meter readings if they have a meter. Very often there is no meter, and if they have a meter, they will not share the readings. But from this kind of maps, we can actually calculate the amount of evapotranspiration and if we make corrections for rainfall uh, and if there is no uh, surface water network in the desert, and then we know that this is all groundwater. And basically it is net because we pump more water, but not all the water is used with 100% efficiency. So some of this water will flow back uh, as, as percolation. So, Basically, what we can see now is also areas where they have 1,800 to 2,000 millimeter of net groundwater abstraction, which means that the 
the gross abstraction is even more. It goes into the 2,500 millimeter range or 25,000 cubic meter per hectare. And again, this kind of information basically can be computed on a 30 meter um, by 30 meter uh, basis. Another example is uh, data from uh, a GRACE satellite. And this is a completely different uh, system, but this system is measuring the changes of the weight uh, of the Earth. Uh, so it, uh, if we use uh, water uh, from aquifers, then basically the total weight of the Earth is getting lighter. Uh, so the gravitational forces will go down. And basically, it is also possible to convert that into a kind of net water withdrawal or, let's say, an, an, a change in storage. And this is a famous picture of uh, northwest India uh, where you can see that in the uh, area of the Punjabs and, and Haryana, uh, you, you have these very dark blue spots. Uh, so you can see that this is the belt where groundwater is overexploited. Uh, you can also see that on the graph on the left hand side which is confirmed from field measurements uh, but um, the, the, the consistency of having data from different satellites and from field measurements I think makes the water accounting system a very, a very powerful one. And I'm very glad to hear that also the new Secretary of Water in India is, for instance, interested in rolling out a national scale water accounting systems. Again, we always summarize it in very simple sheets. So this is the one on groundwater. I will not show you all the sheets today. That's too much. But this is the one on groundwater. So it gives you ideas on how much recharge we have, which depends on the land use. We have maps of land use. Um, we have these pixel-based water balances where we can estimate recharge and so on. But also I showed you, for instance, in Jordan that we have the evapotranspiration of irrigation systems to be much higher than rainfall. So we also can use that information to make estimates on groundwater withdrawals. Uh, and this delta S uh, that we can see um, in the aquifer can come from grace. So by putting it all together, we get a good handle on this whole groundwater system. Now the last part of my uh, lecture today is much more on the water auditing. And um, I think there is a, I, I thought that this paper of Chris Perry in Water International is a very relevant one um, because he's speaking about the E, A, B, C, D, uh, hello? Hello. So he speaks about water accounting first, huh? like the first step is the A, followed by a political process of priority setting, huh? which is the B. Uh, the, the policy people have to say whether they want to uh, provide water to irrigation or they want to import food. Uh, and uh, it decrease the water demands. Also, you have to make rules that reflect the policy, uh, like, like how are we going to make the distribution? Uh, what do we do if we have a water scarce situation? And who is responsible? Uh, which agencies are responsible? Uh, what are the tasks? Uh, and only when that total picture is clear, you can do the engineering uh, work, which means building the canals, the structures, um, etc. So the A here is uh, for accounting. So that's where we start the water accounting. And then after that, you get the bargaining, the codification, the delegation, and the engineering. Uh, and only with this complete uh, picture of the total planning, uh, you can uh, become more resilient to climate uh, changes or more privatization or you can make better plans of building new dams. So please not only think about water accounting alone but also think about the whole auditing. Uh, and FEO made a very nice report recently on the combination of water accounting and water auditing and so they have also um, explaining different steps on um, how to map the socio-economic and financial aspects of this whole thing, uh, like um, what are the incomes, what is the health situation, what is the education situation of people, 
um, what are the gender and minority uh, conditions, uh, what are the water rights, uh, and is there a, a way of charging, and so on. And also this whole governance, like who is responsible, what are the tasks, um, who is doing the maintenance, what kind of laws do we have, can we monitor them uh, or not. So again, it's the accounting is a very nice way that people have the same level of information. I also call that sometimes the, the data democracy. Uh, that people all have more right uh, to the same kind of information. But it only starts with a good information and then you still have to do all this other work on implementing it and, and work at the, uh, the socio-economic aspects of, of water management. So this whole water accounting is a partnership. Um, it's not done by UNESCO IHG only, but we do this together with the uh, IMI, uh, with FAO and also with WAP, um, the World Water Assessment uh, Program uh, of, of uh, UNESCO uh, that directly reports to UN Water. You can imagine UN Water also wants to have standardized data on what is happening in the world uh, and they also believe that water accounting is a very transparent way, uh, scientifically rigorous way to, yeah, to, to, to create a standard uh, reporting system. Uh, so they are the partners and uh, we have this website um, wateraccounting.org. Um, so for those of you who would like to have additional information on uh, background, on the methodologies, but also on the tools, and then um, you can visit um, this website. So my dream, finally. Um, yeah, I think we, we are in a digital era. And so we have now the opportunities, I have given you several examples, that we have great opportunities to much better quantify the hydrological cycle, um, but also the water management aspects of it, the human influence on storage of water, redistribution of water, um, irrigation management and so on. And we have to use that information to not only make better planning, but I think also um, the bottom up. So on the one hand, it is top down, where together with um, ministries, uh, federal agencies, you can do planning of scarce water resources. But I think at the same time, I would plea to also help the people on the ground. Uh, um, so um, mainly on uh, what is happening. Um, can we provide information to the gatekeepers also on, on the irrigation performance, uh, whether they will do well or not? Do all the farmers get enough water? Um, and as you can see on this, on this picture, huh, you can see that it's almost like an electronic <laughs> billboard that when the farmers pass by this billboard at the, at the canal, they can see really who's using how much water. Huh? So, that that would be great. We can even bring this information to the mobile phones of farmers, not only about the entire canal or a tertiary unit, but even but also on the own plot. Uh, the, the, the first thing a farmer wants to know, what is the moisture situation in my own plot? Do I do well? Do I use my water wisely? And so on. And the whole argument I have today is that we can do this. Uh, we have the technologies in the house. Um, everything is open access uh, and uh, through the ADB projects we have now been able to start introducing this to India, Sri Lanka, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia and so far I must say all the countries are very positive that now they get more information and the next step is to, that we embed it so, so that not only they get this data but they also they are going to use it for the top-down planning but also from the bottom-up um, operation of uh, irrigation systems. So thank you for um, listening to this and I think we have now time for questions and answers. Dr. Wim, uh, thank you. Question. Uh, that was a great presentation. Uh, now uh, we are uh, looking for questions. 
Uh, Vim, to start with, I will uh, give you one question. Uh, this yes, comes please. from uh, Marko Jospovich. Uh, he says, are those global hydrological models which you were talking about earlier, are they public? Uh, are people able to use them, basically? Yes, yes. We only use public domain uh, models. Um, I think uh, the um, hydrological models are, have a moderate accuracy. There are too many assumptions um, in these models, um, especially when it comes to water management. Um, if you look at the uh, hydrology without human interference, um, I think we can have a first a reasonable estimate on, on flows and so on. But the very moment um, people get involved in, in diversion, in the retention of water, in the redistribution of water, um, these global hydrology models are too simple. That is the basically one of the main arguments to use remote sensing data. Remote sensing data, we can really measure. We can measure what is happening on every pixel. Uh, we, we are not measuring moisture or evapotranspiration directly, but we measure spectral reflectances, temperatures, emissivities, all physical uh, factors that are related to these hydrological processes. And I think that the fact that we can measure every area in a unique way, uh, in a discrete way, um, really is the key on, on developing such kind of accounting system. Okay, uh, Yasmin, is there any comment from your side? Uh, we have a few questions coming up. Uh, we'll pass it on to Avim. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, would you like to add something? Yes, I was just going to say that, well, um, of course, for, as Wim has mentioned, this is revolutionizing how we look at water and how we understand how much water is being used by whom on our river basins, within our irrigation systems. From ADB's side, we, we consider it incredibly important to get independent assessments. Wim also talked about data and access. In fact, in countries like, for example, Myanmar, often there is no data available. So as the second best approach, if you're trying to de develop projects, water sector projects, this provides us an opportunity to start considering how, how much resource is available in a river basin. And of course, importantly, as increasingly there are competing demands for water within a river basin, it's incredibly important for project managers and governments, uh, executing agencies, to understand how much resource is available and how much can we use it in different uses of water within a basin. Right. Vin, uh, I have passed on two questions to you. Uh, are you able to see them? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, okay, Mr. Sayed Ahmed, the, he says, which satellites shall be used to estimate the root zone soil moisture in Iran or the moisture of the top soil layer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now very good question. Um, in fact, all the satellites that have a thermal infrared band uh, can be used. So the temperature is the most important. I did not speak about it today because it's a technical detail. But basically from the temperature of the leaves, we can read uh, the access to moisture. Uh, so when there is more moisture in the root zone, the leaf temperature will drop immediately. Um, so you can say like, um, um, if, if, if there is a little bit um, shortage of moisture, the temperature of the leaves uh, will increase immediately with a few degrees. Uh, so um, that's a very sensitive um, condition and that also allows us to look into the soil through or via the crop. These microwave emissions that people have been promoting for a long time only look at the top, uh, top soil, the top few centimeters, and they are not so useful. Uh, also, they come with very big pixel sizes, so that, that's for irrigation absolutely uh, not uh, not useful. So, what's the okay. second question? Uh, the, there's one question which uh, talks about uh, how accurate is the stream flow estimation? Uh, this is Terry von Kalken, and he wants to know how accurate is the stream flow estimation uh, based on uh, these uh, uh, measurements uh, from satellites. 
Yeah, yeah. Now that's a very good question. So we have been uh, experimenting on, on on many places, of course. Um, the the moment we develop these tools, we first check them for uh, basins where we do have uh, access to Streamflow. I would say uh, on a monthly scale, uh, typically um, the error is in the order of uh, 10 percent, 10 to 5 to 10 percent. Um, I think that is also the same order of the accuracy of the field measurements uh, themselves. Right? So um, I would say they, they are very, uh, very similar. And the re there is a reason. The, 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 the reason is that um, it's really based on the conservation of the water balance. So it's not the classical rainfall runoff calculations that people usually do, but we, we include also the evapotranspiration as a very important component into the water balance, and we calibrate them on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis first for the entire year. And so there is a very stringent um, approach why we have this higher accuracy. Good, thank you. Uh, just to continue with the, the earlier question uh, about the open access uh, models, uh, one Mr. Athin Kumar Tyagi wants to know uh, whether these all models are available on your wateraccounting.org? Can they yeah. download it? Yes, they can download it. And uh, also there is this website, GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, GitHub, uh, search on water accounting. Uh, and then also you can see some of these uh, tools. They're all made in Python language because we want to have one global standard language that now everyone is using is for free. Uh, and Python is a very strong to deal also with spatial data. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have plus, uh, one Mr. Kulkarni. Uh, he has raised his hand and he wants to ask some question. Mr. Suresh Kulkarni, you can speak out yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. First of all, I'm extremely happy to participate in the webinar and congratulate uh, Secretary General ICID. Uh, and this was an excellent presentation. Uh, my question here is uh, the Maharashtra of Maharashtra. I am talking from Mumbai. Uh, has been doing this water accounting and water auditing since long, but it's uh -huh. purely based upon very, uh, let me say, very crude procedure. Uh, so, uh, is it possible to introduce this water accounting system for a state like Maharashtra? And yes. my specific question is: We have a combination of uh, surface irrigation system and uh, uh, your uh, groundwater irrigation system. There are more than 2 million wells in the state. Mm. Also, we have something like uh, uh, 40, million, 40 lakh, 4, 4 million hectares of irrigated area across the state. Mm. We don't know exactly how much groundwater is used, how much surface water is used. Is yeah. it possible to differentiate groundwater and surface water abstraction? <laughs> okay, now this is a, this is quite uh, quite tough, but we can make reasonable estimates. So to, to answer your first question, um, yes, we can do that for Maharashtra. So together with the group of Yasmin, we are working now in uh, in MP, Madhya Pradesh, and also in Karnataka. So even in Karnataka, they are making a center for water accounting. They really believe that by using this new spatial data they can make very rapid assessments and for instance the project that we do uh, show that in a period of one year we, 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 we can make assessments at state level so it's not that you have to invest first millions of dollars in instruments and devices and then after five years or so get some first results the whole idea is that we can do really a very quick scan uh, in a matter of let's say one or two months and then um, later on together with local agencies uh, provide capacity building and training so that these people then also can take over the, this kind of analysis. Um, yes, we can determine the amount of the uh, water irrigated, so the water applied at the farm gate, we, we can estimate. Um, I think the, ac the accuracy is pretty high. What is less accurate is the the um, partitioning into surface water and into groundwater. Uh, that I have to be uh, honest about. And uh, so one way to do is that we also look at the canals. Yeah? So where are the canals located? What is the distance to the nearest stream or to the nearest reservoir? Of course, land that is continuously contiguous, contiguously irrigated near the um, reservoirs are very likely to be surface water. If you see much more these isolated fields, 
you know, that suddenly, like the one I showed you on uh, Jordan and, and Lebanon, that one field is very wet and then a few fields have nothing and then another one is very wet and that typically is a pattern that is related to groundwater. Um, but yeah, we're still doing research uh, in the academic world to further improve the, this partition. And Wim, uh, maybe I can yes, just sir. add to that. Yeah. Can I just add uh, two points that Wim's made just to, to supplement them because we're actually doing this now with Wim and his team. In Cambodia, we're working very hard on training government counterpart staff in the Water Resources Ministry so that we ensure that there is a, a strong group of people available at the national level or even uh, lower down who can continue this work so that there is a um, knowledge and memory inside the country itself to do this. And I think the other example that we mentioned about um, using the data to be able to separate out groundwater use and surface water use, uh, the results we've received very recently from WIM's team for Vietnam, where we have much more complex cropping, in fact, perhaps one of the most complex cropping systems that WIM's team would have seen, where we have high value crops like coffee and mangoes and so on, we can see now uh, that the next step of the activity, which is really to go down to the ground level and speak to farmers and, and understand what the maps are showing us and then ground truth again with farmers information so that we can help separate out where we see patches of um, different crop productivities to go down and meet the farmers and find out what they're doing so we learn more about the water management practices on the ground. Yep. Thank you Yasmin. Uh, we are coming to the end of our session uh, last question again coming from India uh, is Mr. Kaluai Yella Reddy. Mr. Reddy, uh, your speaker is now on. Please ask the question. Uh, thank you very much, uh, thank you, Garun, and I thank uh, ICID for organizing this uh, very important webinar. I thank uh, Dr. Rim also for sharing good information. Along with me, about 20 people from Walamtari attending this webinar from Hyderabad. I'm very happy to tell that one. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, yeah, about 20 people are there with me attending this uh, webinar from Hyderabad Walamtari. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, we are we are conducting now uh, this uh, baseline studies of 10 medium irrigation projects in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana on behalf of the Ministry of Water Resources, Government of India. Uh, what we see at a project as a whole, we can use some tools to do water accounting. And, but when we go to the regional level, smaller distributors, the major issue is the water accounting. So the measurement is very difficult issue. Okay, there we are finding out a lot of difficulties in quantifying the water that goes to each distributor. And uh, these are certain issues we observe. But as a global level, as you say, at project level, remote sensing, GIS is good. But when we want to really evaluate a distributor or water user association level, the measurement is important. One more observation I make is that earlier about 26 projects have been evaluated uh, from these states uh, where the efficiencies were found out to be very low. As a country as a whole, we have less than 40% efficiency in the projects. One quarter, uh, one section of the people, they think that even the water lost in the surface irrigation that goes to the ground, so there is no loss of water. But uh, we find that is uh, not actually uh, the is helping us. When the water goes to the ground, uh, then again you have to lift it. You have to spend energy. So that uh, even though it is in the system, the efficiencies are going to suffer. So I would like to throw these issues to uh, you and uh, that how can we improve this trend. No, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Reddy. And I'm always happy to hear that you're attending with a big group. Um, the good thing is also next week I will be in Delhi meeting with um, your Secretary of Water to speak about the national water accounting system. Uh, he really got uh, his attention that he wants to have a standard system for entire India. Um, so I hope that your state also can contribute uh, to that. Um, yes, indeed, uh, accounting is meant to help the whole debate on efficiency, for instance. Huh? Um, uh, United Nations always say, well, we just improve efficiency and then all the water scarcity is solved, uh, which is not possible. 
Uh, um, you have to look at how the what the local efficiencies are, uh, but also how efficiency changes with scale, for instance. Huh? Um, we know that some water is is recaptured, and then if you look at the larger picture, at the, the, the bigger picture, you know the the efficiency is much higher. Um, for instance, my work in the Nile has shown that locally the efficiency is 40 or 50 percent, which is very low. But if you look at the total Nile, then in fact it's 80 percent, eh, because a lot of water is recycled. And you're right; that's not always, you know, um, the the complete picture because if you have to pump it again and again, you have much more energy costs. So there is absolutely an energy issue there, but also I would say a water quality issue, huh? because all the time that is used, and if you mix it with agrochemicals, you, you get a deterioration of your water quality. Huh? So that is always an, uh, an important aspect. But um, the whole idea of the accounting is to get a clearer understanding on efficiencies. C can you really improve it? Uh, yes or no. And maybe I should mention here also one more time that we can do the accounting for different sizes of areas. So we can do it at the entire basin, uh, but also we can do it for one irrigation scheme. And if you say, no, I really want to have that one particular distributary, then also we can focus on that one specific distributary. And so it's a kind of a common approach, but it can be applied at different spatial aggregation levels. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Wim. Uh, Wim, uh, sorry, there's one more last question, and we cannot avoid this. This is uh, coming from uh, our past president, uh, vice president, Mr. Hussein Gundugu. Uh, Mr. Hussein Gundugu, uh, your mic is on. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Wim, I mean, I would like to learn just, if you give me an example, if any country use these models continuously, Right, mm -hmm. because I mean, that type of studies there has been many, many times. You know, they were you were studying on this one. But I would like to learn if any country invests in that area and use this methodology for their water accounting system, which is more okay. important. Otherwise, yes. these well, are all the scientifically. <laughs> I mean, this is also important for the country where the transboundary water issue is very, very. Important on the sensitive issues and also the water uh, the water scarcity is available. Yeah, yeah, dear Hussein, um, this whole water accounting plus is rather new. Um, we have started to develop it a few years ago. So I get this question all the time. You know, like what is the impact? Has it changed things and so on? Um, this takes time. You know, we. Um, we, we are now learning several countries in Asia on what it is, they get the training, they get exposure to the software, um, but we also need to give them some time to institutionalize, to make water accounting groups, and then bring this data towards the table of the decision makers. So, um, in a way, it's not yet operationally embedded. It's too early. Um, um, it, it takes a few more years. Maybe Yasmin can add to that. Yeah. Um, I, I might be a bit more optimistic than Wim on this because, um, of course, ADB is now using these approaches on actual investment projects and development projects. Uh, particularly, I'll give the example of Vietnam where for the first time we're using the water productivity tool to look at how much crop biomass is produced per cubic meter of water and that's actually going to go into a project design itself and be used as the performance indicator for that project and ADB we are actively encouraging the use of productivity as a measure um, and no longer relying on the, the concept of efficiency in the past, efficiency has been used very much as the measure, and it's a very difficult, difficult to measure actually in the field. Whereas productivity, and especially using remote sensing, allows us now to be able to see large irrigation systems and look at how water is being used, and then establishing the baseline so we can see that after our investments, how much improvement have we made in, in terms of producing biomass per cubic meter of water. So we're on the right path. We have had quite a change internally with how we're considering water accounting and water productivity and we have very promising results from the countries we're working in. 
Maybe I can add much. that. Okay, a country like Egypt, for instance, um, they have also really uh, very high interest. Uh, the minister really wants to have a center for water accounting. He is making now the new national water resources plan, and it will be largely based on on this kind of uh, new information. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wim Bastelson. Uh, I think it has been a great uh, webinar. Uh, we are sorry that in the beginning there were some glitches, uh, and please, please don't mind that uh, because uh, all this uh, recording of this whole session is being placed on our website, and you will all get a connect a link to that. Uh, you can revisit that. In the beginning, Dr. Uh, Wim was uh, talking about the issues, challenges, etc. So you might not have missed too much uh, so far as the water account is concerned. So thank you everybody. Thank you uh, Dr. Bim Bastiansen. It has been a great pleasure to have you with us. Uh, uh, Yasmin, thank you very much for being on the panel. Uh, and uh, everybody, all those who have participated, uh, thank you very much. You will uh, again hear from us uh, in a month's time. And next time uh, it will be about, uh, 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 about uh, sorry, I think, uh, uh, this is about uh, what I, sorry, uh, Varmaji? Yeah, that, 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 that is uh, from uh, Martin Burton yeah. on, uh, on water management and related issues. Yes. Yeah. So you will be hearing from us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all of us. Uh, let me just mention that uh, uh, all the time we had about 85 plus uh, members attending and listening to us uh, and we are happy that uh, there are more, many more who have been listening as Yel already, Dr. Yel already mentioned uh, through web webcasting there. So once again, thank you everybody. Thanks for making thank this a second. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Narizhi, you want yes, to say a few? Yes, just I wanted to thank uh, Wim. It was very lovely and very interesting uh, speech and uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to see this uh, technology goes forward to deal with the individual farmers within the uh, arid region. They are relying on the single uh, pumping wells and to be able to use this technology to improve their uh, effectiveness of uh, their water availability. Yeah, no, exactly. That's what Thank we you. need to do. Yeah, yeah, just just one question. The next webinar is on benchmarking. Uh, yeah, sorry, benchmarking is. Yeah, yeah next webinar. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. And, uh, may, Bye. may, I ask, uh, may I say the last word? Yes. Uh, uh, I was wondering if the technology of remote sensing is the to a standard which we can anticipate uh, irrigation timing. Uh, I hope one day we will be able to use this remote sensing to be able to uh, improve yeah. the irrigation scheduling and timing. Yeah, sure. No, it's coming. It's coming. So the accounting is the step one, and then the number two is much more operational monitoring, where uh, we can uh, today we can give the picture of yesterday for the performance, but also we make the the prediction for tomorrow, so that uh, you get can get an advice to wait for four days or wait for three days, or instead of uh, throwing your 60 millimeter, uh, provide 51 millimeter and so on. Yeah. So this is coming. Yes, yes. It's a matter of a uh, little bit more time. We need big data uh, and, and very strong computers, but uh, also there we're making good progress. All right, thank you very much. It was very nice indeed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody from ICAT Central Office. Thank you very much once again for all the attendees, panelists, presenters, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.